Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello there, my listeners to the podcast, Hello Self. I am your host, Patricia Leonard, and I'm so excited that you're here because I have a guest that you will never forget. She has done it all and trusted herself that no matter what came into her mind, she could handle it. So if you're standing on that corner, I've said this before, I don't know what to do and I don't know if I could do that kind of thing. It's time to just move forward. She'll be giving you some tips, letting you know what the Hello Self moments in her life were that caused her to get on a new trajectory. And she's doing a million kind of things right now and never stops. So I'd like, first of all, just to you meet my guest, Jenny Ann, say hello to my audience. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Patricia. It's always, <laughs> I always love seeing you. I lo- always love talking with you. So yeah, really grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you. We're, I am so glad you're here because you're going to set my audience on fire to want to know more about you. So what I'll do is, as always with Hello Self Podcast, I'm going to give you just a little brief about Jenny Ann, and then she's going to take you on the total journey. Oh, we'll have a conversation back and forth every now and then. But for most part, this is Jenny's story, because I believe that in every story, everybody's story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. So here we go. Jenny Ann said, she gave me a little brief here. We met through Women in Film and Television in Nashville, Tennessee. And for some reason, we were just talking a few minutes ago, and for some reason, we just connected. We just clicked. We had never met before, but it was almost like we had known each other and so grateful. And we have done this. We have connected since then in many ways. She took some of my poems and my songs to my lyrics to a song, but we'll talk more about some of those things. But anyway, Jenny said she went to a private school on Long Island for jazz and ended up getting heavily into acting, movies, TV shows, and even the fashion industry. She has an abundance of information just to give you. She said we may need two or three hours. No, we're just kidding. (laughs) But that's usually what happens. But also she's in uh, music, producing, does photography, modeling. She does a little bit of everything. So what I'm going to do right now is let Jenny take us on her journey of her life, whatever she wants to share. Thank you, Jenny. It's your turn. <laughs> yeah. So my journey in my life, I I literally was singing in the high chair. Like I literally was singing little things and my dad would sing back to me. I came from a family that was really not musical at all. Not My dad was creative er, into photography, but I didn't really have that around me. Yeah. But yet, even as a little kid, I was singing and dancing all the time. In elementary school, I actually wanted to perform on the stage. It was almost like TPAC, like our performing arts center. I wanted to take acting classes there when I was in like elementary school. And unfortunately, I didn't have the transportation, but I did start piano at seven, voice lessons at 13 or 14. I was a select vocal group in high school and high school, I started studying acting in school and stuff. Growing up, I actually grew up in Buffalo, New York. And growing up there, I lived in the suburbs and I just always felt different and just because it was very much conservative, a lot of cheerleaders and that kind of thing. And I was always just very, so when I went away to college, I went to school on Long Island. I was a jazz vocal major. I got a scholarship to go to the school and I just was like, that was just always who I was. I'd love to sing. Let me do that. And I got there and started school and the acting director heard me singing and he said, you should really be studying acting. So it came back into my life again. And I think one of the reasons he saw that in me was 
when I would sing, I would really connect with the lyrics and be telling that story. And I think connecting with that emotionally and being able to portray it through the voice, that was, so I started getting into theater and then suddenly I was doing all these movies and television shows in Manhattan, New York City. And I was working there all the time and I really wasn't doing a lot of music. And in 2001, I finished school and was looking at apartments in Brooklyn. And then I just decided, I was like, you know what? I need to go. I need an adventure. I moved out to Colorado two weeks before 9-11 happened, wow. which is something in my gut. I was supposed to leave right around the time and something in my gut was telling me I need to go. So I left and two weeks later that happened, which was devastating. I was in Colorado for a little while. I worked for an entertainment company in Boulder. Felt like I was just in so much, like it was beautiful, but I felt like I went from so much industry to not enough. Came to Nashville in 2003 and I've been here pretty much ever since. And I've definitely had a lot of adventures and it's really amazing because when I first moved here, I started getting a lot of opportunities. Then I met my husband, had kids. And I feel like I got lost in that. I love my family, but I lost some of my direction with performing and stuff because I was having trouble finding that balance. How do you be a mom? How do you be a performer? How do you wear all of the hats? And it's taken me a little while to, to figure it out, but I'm really in that place now. And man, I'm just thriving now. And I'm so grateful. And I think being a female and I have two daughters and them seeing them seeing me do what I'm doing now, I think is also showing them that you can do mm -hmm. follow your dreams. doesn't matter. You don't have to stop being you because society thinks so, or you have family expectations or whatever. Just always just remembering who you are and just listening to that intuition, almost like around the time of nine yeah. 11, even now I had something recently and, and I just l listening to your gut, just knowing that something is this doesn't feel right, or this feels amazing. And I feel like that's our inner guidance. And that's really helped me a lot along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. I like the fact that you're talking about inner guidance. And this is what we don't pay attention to a lot of times, Jenny Ann, is the knowing that we have that it's either time to move on and not feel guilty about it. And that's what you're saying. You became a wife and a mother. And you even saw a different aspect of yourself. I'm a role model now for my daughters mm -hmm. and leading other women to make decisions, just like the people on this podcast. So you had many hello self moments in that just recently you were talking about a mother doesn't have to give up their life. No, no. Yes. And it, honestly, over the last year, I, I've had such a massive internal, and, it, and that really was what needed to happen was having that internal shift. A lot of things were on just pause and things weren't happening the way I, I would have liked to. But what needed to happen was I needed to do that internal work. And if I, how do we attract what we want into our lives if we don't necessarily believe we deserve it anymore? So it's really important for us to do that internal work and get to a, a place where you know that you're worthy of it, that you're capable of it. And that if you don't believe in yourself, why should anybody else? Do you get around other people? Because we talk so much about the system or the group of people that were around. Did you get, uh, did you, uh, did some of your hello self moments come from others that you met along the way in Nashville or Colorado or New York? How well, is that? Yeah. I. I loved New York because I felt very seen. Everybody like loved the red hair, loved all that. Yes. And it was that energy. And I think being around that environment of people really recognizing and seeing helps you believe in yourself. Mm. But at the same time, we can't walk around in society expecting to get validation from our outside world. Ah, great point. Because if we're not, if we're only expecting to get it from the outside world and we're not getting it, then we're going to feel this big. I have really learned in town, I've really started putting myself around different people mm. and really started giving myself that self-validation, doing, you know, affirmations, doing mirror work, looking at myself in the mirror in the eyes and saying, I am beautiful. I am talented. I'm all these different things. 
And it's even if you don't believe it, you start to after all. Yes, that's so true. It's like when, when I first started doing that, I would say things to myself. And then I would go out somewhere and someone would come up to me and tell me it. It was the weirdest thing. It was almost like I was attracting it into my life. I'm a very big believer in the law of, law of attraction. What we put out, we get back and energies and things like that. And it was very strange because when I first started really working on those affirmations, that mirror work, looking myself in the eyes, saying, I am confident, I am strong, I am beautiful, all these things. And then I would go out and people would come up to me and literally like just say certain things. And it was just weird at first. And then it was just like, wow, this is really powerful. And the more I did it, the more I started to believe it myself. Hmm. And that's when I started to believe that myself the rest of the world started to believe it too. And now the opportunities, what is happening in my life is just, it's just incredible. It's just been such a massive shift. And I think one thing you said that everything's beginning to happen now, you're Mm -hmm. seeing and validating your own ability to do all of these things. And it's just like you said, everybody else is seeing what you can do and bringing you in. I think that is a key factor. I love what you said about validating yourself because that is not what most of us do. We look at somebody, we, yeah, we look at somebody like you and say, I don't look like her, or I don't have the talent she has, or we don't know the talent we have unless we step in to some things that we feel uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trust me, there were plenty of years. And even still, I don't look like her. I don't look like, I don't look like most people. I've got crazy red curly hair and I'm, I don't dress like normal, the usual. I'm definitely, especially in Nashville, Nashville is a little different and, and coming from New York and stuff, but I, I, we are all one of a kind and I'm all about embracing that and just being my own original authentic self and holding my head up high and just in doing that. But trust me, there were many times where I was like, oh, I don't look like that. Or I don't look like that. And and it's just, you know what? So what? Like, we have to love ourselves for who we are and how we were created. And we are each a gift. And yeah, we're, I don't know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, I think you're right. How does that come out in your music? How does confidence in yourself come out in your music? Because I mentioned that Jenny plays the guitar and she sings and performs. So how does that uh that confidence come forth in your music do you just get on stage and you feel more confident when you start singing or how do you think it's really interesting because when I play music and it's just me I feel that connection in my heart like it's just something yes. that I'm supposed to you know it's that internal feeling and it's it's not this big adrenaline thing or anything but when I get on stage and play something just happens it's just like energetically I just it's just it feels so good. And it's if I haven't done it in a little, little while, it's like, why haven't I done this recently? This needs to be happening more. And, and now like huge opportunities are happening, which I'm very excited about. I can't talk too much about right, all of them yet, right. but, but I actually more recently have started working as a co-host on a talk show and which, and also I've started working on the production end behind the scenes. And honestly, like that for me has just, it's my place. Like, I just feel like in being on a talk show and things like that, because it brings me back to the days in New York and a lot of the work I used to do. And it just reminded me how much I love being on set and how much I love and how much I have an eye for it. Yes, um, yes. And so I actually recently took a class on how to, how to learn how to work the whole studio. I feel like I'm just all about being empowered. Knowledge is power. I love the idea of like, females working together, helping each other. And, and women like Tina Fey, they do it all. Like, why do I only have to be one thing? Because for the longest time, who are you? Like, I'm supposed to be this one thing. It's yeah, I'm really good at a lot of things. Oh my gosh. I I don't have to be this one thing. So I'm really learning how to utilize all of my skills. A fabulous point, Jenny, a fabulous point, because our society wants to put people in a box. Yes. Because that way they can say she is this. Yes. And so when Jenny introduces herself, how do you introduce yourself? That's interesting. 
Yeah, me trying to uh, create an elevator pitch. Yeah, you know, it's just see. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um, I just introduce myself. I'm just like, hey, I'm Jenny Ann. How you doing? And I just have this inner spark, and just I just start talking to people, and I just let the conversation unfold. I'm a very humble person. I have a big heart, and for a long time, I felt uncomfortable with talking about myself, with mm-hmm. talking about my gifts and my skills and. I was given these gifts for a reason and, but I felt weird and uncomfortable about talking about it. Cause it's, yes. I don't want to feel like I'm bragging, yes. but I've found, especially being in the entertainment industry, you have to talk about yourself because how else is opportunity going to come to you? If people don't know who you are and what you do, how is opportunity going to come to you? And I've really learned a balance in that because I, being in the entertainment industry, again, I've spent a lot of time with people and it's, I don't mean to be negative, but sometimes it's exhausting because name drop, all they do is, yeah, and it's, that's great, but let's talk about some, what kind of projects are going on, or let's talk about getting creative, or let's, let's talk about how we can help society. I don't know. I just think life is too short for that. But again, it's finding that balance, that helps me out. I need to talk about myself and it's not bragging, but there's the right way to kind of do it. And I think in my coaching work, And in my performing work or writing, whatever, one of the things that I say is so critical is learning how to celebrate self. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the reason, and you're just confirming this in your conversation, in your sharing. One thing about celebrating yourself or me celebrating myself or our audience celebrating themselves, it gives freedom to others to say it's okay, that's not really bragging, that's celebrating who we are. So we have to take, it's like our perception of the world and our perception of ourselves in a different way, demonstrating it in a different way. And you're absolutely right. The Southern way was more, it was more seen about bragging specifically, yes. And I came from the north, a little Indiana, which is not that much, but it's got the influence from Chicago and some bigger cities. And I think you're absolutely right. It was a major transition. So what you're describing is we may be in a group that's got more talent, that we think, or that has more experience, we think, or that it. they're always talking about each other or their whatever the story is and what you're saying is I'm celebrating myself because it gives career opportunities it makes me feel good about myself and it frees up others is that what you're saying about celebrating yeah 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 in a nutshell I would say yes (laughs) yeah because Yeah. yeah yeah Yeah. And it's just being proud of Mark. You know, like, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing and believing in yourself and yes. going out there with that confidence, not ego, but confidence. Oh, that's just, interesting. Ego. Yeah. You know, cause there's just, there's a, I feel like there's a difference in that, you know, say more and about that. I feel the ego is something that sometimes can be maybe, I don't know, difference between bragging maybe, or I don't know. I don't know. Uh, One thing that I, I, ego, going to... I see, think of ego as more of a negative thing, but I don't know. I don't know. Some people might see it as not a negative thing. I think I, when I think of ego as someone, oh, I'm, I'm too cool for you, or I'm too like just that kind of experience. Well, and I think I have to share well, something here that Brady, the football player, the quarterback, Tom Brady. Yeah. yeah Tom Brady. He said one time, or I read it that he had written it. I don't know if I actually heard it, but he said there's an ego that is about bragging and there's an ego calling. Mm -hmm. And yes, and the ego that calls is heart-centered, emotional-centered, spiritual-centered, whatever. And he said the difference between that is a lot of people see me as having a big ego as a quarterback. He said, the very same thing that has made me great has been my ego because it made me step into, like you were describing, places that I was fearful to step in, places Mm -hmm. that some, yeah. So the ego, I love that a lot is 
Don't let the ego make you feel guilty or you can't use yes. the ego in a way that takes you across that line. Yeah. I, 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 that's a great tip for yeah. everybody or a yeah. strategy. Yeah. yeah. Is what, what is a strategy you would tell somebody if they think they can't, what is one strategy or one tip you would say, if you think you can't, and I'm standing at this corner of, I don't know what to do and I don't know what is one idea or tip that you would give them to move past that. Let me tell you this. Really okay, quickly, cool. Patricia. My family and I, we've, we've been through a lot over the years. We lost my stepdaughter. We've had other things yes. going on this year. My youngest actually was diagnosed with autism. There's always obstacles. There's always going to be things going on. And we can allow those difficult times to take over us and allow us to give up, or we can look at it and trust and know that there is light on the other side of it. And you're, we're going to get through that and just staying focused through that as well. I think that so often when things happen, negative things happen, we neglect ourselves. And I think that something I've really learned is how important it is to maintain self-care every day, self-care, doing readings, meditation, exercise, just taking a walk in nature, anything that you can do to maintain that self-care. Because when those difficult times come, because they are going to come, it's part of life. It happens to everyone. It makes them so much more manageable and it really helps you stay centered and focused on who you are and what your goals and what your dreams are. It doesn't allow you to get totally, I used to allow negativity to just, when it would come along, it would just suck me right out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. This is too overwhelming. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then I would go backwards again, I'd start going forward and then it'd pull me back again. And once I really learned part of that was the self-care, I wasn't doing enough self-care to, to maintain that love. Oh. You know, that inner guidance and that inner peace to, to get up the next day and say, we got to keep going. Let's stay focused and stuff. The other thing too is, and I still have to work on this a little bit because I have oh, some- Oh, yes, we always do. <laughs> I've got some opportunities in front of me and, and I'm, a big one is fear. Ah. Letting fear limit us and not, I don't know, just- sometimes we're honestly we're the only ones standing in our way really ah. we really are I yes. mean, if we don't take the risk and put ourselves out there and how are we gonna know and what's the worst can happen they say no okay move on it wasn't the right project <laughs> that's right but something else i've learned over the years if a project doesn't work out it's okay because it wasn't supposed to happen because there's a better one for you out there that's Bravo. something yeah yep and I'm just enjoying the good projects because I've got just so many wonderful things happening. And the other thing as well is self-care, 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 but give back, take care of others, spread positivity, positive energy. I've got my group Let Love Rule, which is still going. That's so near and dear to my heart. And it's just that saying, the more you give, the more you receive. It's really true. It really is true. And it's just, I don't know. Yeah. That was a long answer. I hope I... I answered your question. No, <laughs> it doesn't matter. What you're sharing is exactly what we need to yeah. hear, all of us. And you're absolutely right. Life doesn't stop at 50 or 40 or 30 or you're, I'm learning my, even myself at my age, very extended age, but I'm still learning a lot about who Patricia is. So mm -hmm. it never stops. And the, to the doubting never stops. But we learn a little bit more about how to get inside ourselves and each time just face the challenge. I had a client today called me and he's been turned down for several jobs mm -hmm. and he got let go from his company. And I said, I know this is going to sound really mean, but I'm not a nice coach. No, I didn't. But I said, this is going to sound really mean. But I'm glad you lost your job because now you're looking for what makes your heart sing. Yeah. And when we find what makes our heart, not the one thing, but the many things that make our heart sing, those hurdles 
will b not be as difficult. And that's what you're describing so oh, well. totally, totally. Because there's been th projects that I've been involved in that I liked, but they I, something wasn't sitting right. You know, that inner voice, that inner guidance yes. in me was like, I'm not supposed to do this. And as soon as I walked away, something even bigger came. And it's for me, I'm very much, as I said, like very much into the law of attraction and just energy and things like that. I studied Bob Proctor for many years and yes. gratitude and it's just all so powerful. And we are meant to live our uh, an incredible life. We weren't here created to be here to struggle or to have an awful life. We were here to have a great life and it's up to us to communicate that and put it out there. And yeah. if we're settling for something, then it's exactly what we're talking about. How is the universe going to provide you something better? And by making that statement saying, I'm better than this, I'm not settling for this position. I know I'm better than this. I know I deserve better and letting it go. It's exactly what you said. You're opening up and you're communicating with the universe they believe in themselves. It's like a faith thing. I, how do you explain it? Yeah, it's, it and you're is, opening yourself up to receive even greater than you can even imagine. But when we I, settle I, for I, less, I that's what we're going to get. We're going to keep getting less. The more, the, exactly like you, the more you focus on what you don't want, you're going to get more of that, you know? Yes. So walk around, walking around every day and walking in gratitude and love and focusing all, on all the good things that you have. It's very difficult to be depressed when you're constantly, you know, and he, when you're constantly walking around, walking, thinking about the things you're grateful for. And living in, yes, and living in joy and living in happiness. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like something you said about our, our own self-limiting prison that we put ourselves in. You didn't say exactly those words, but it's exactly what we do. Yeah. We Stand limit. Stand yes, yeah. yes. And we let other people speak for us and convince us, no, this is what you should do. And again, yes, we have to look within our heart or within our soul or within our intuition or go for a walk out in nature and let nature tell us. I, I, this is so on with where our society is right now. And I know everyone listening is going to be taking a different look at themselves after mm -hmm. this based upon the sh the things that you've shared this bless your heart that you're co-hosting what mm -hmm. is that about i'm very excited about it our good friend donna she did a screen test with my good friend morelia and my friend cameo i brought cameo in on it uh, she did a screen test with us and she had this idea donna had this idea for the show I guess for years, she's had this idea. She, Donna moved here from LA and we work with Donna and yes. Seth and she had this yes. idea for the show. So basically it's four women co-hosts. We also have Jen involved as well. And I'm from different parts of New York, but have lived in Nashville for many years. Morelia originally is from LA and she has lived in Nashville since I think the nineties. And then the two other women are like born and raised in Tennessee. So it's a very diverse group of us and but we talk about southern topics which and it's just such different points of view being from all over and but yet living here now so what's and the mission what's the mission what's the mission I, that's a good question we just filmed our first four episodes but we just the mission is fun connecting with women and I don't know. <laughs> because I would, it's, that's probably a Donna question. We have special guests on the show. It's like The View, but it's a Southern based, Southern based show. And it's just all about female talk and engagement. And yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know what the mission, the mission is, is, but is. The mission maybe is to showcase Nashville and Southern culture. However, what I, if I'm looking at it from my own, and I haven't seen the show, but if mm -hmm. I'm looking at it from my own perspective, mm -hmm. I would say that it's women learning about women, because I think that women don't know other women. And sometimes they feel jealous of other women. They mm -hmm. don't support them. And mm -hmm. we like to say that's because of attitude. I think it's because we have not been brought up in our society to be supportive. And everybody says that women are nurturers. That is not always true. 
We may be nurturing as mothers to our children, but that's not always true. And I've hired women in court. I, I know, and I've worked. But I think if I were just to look at the view, for instance, there's many points of view there. Mm -hmm. But I think that one of the things that they're trying to do is learn about what is a woman? What is a woman? Mm -hmm. What is a woman from LA? We've got our opinions. Mm -hmm. What is a woman from New York? We've got our opinions, but see, <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I mean. So if I were to look at that just from, and I haven't seen anything, yeah. but the mission value would simply to be that women respecting other women and the differences they have. As a matter of fact, our society needs that. Yes. But the reason well, I, I wanted yeah. The thing about the show, something I really love, I actually have been working a little bit on the production side of it as well. I helped design the set and I've worked a little bit with some of the lighting and some of the other back end. And I just, we just filmed the first four episodes and it's just, it's, it, you're talking about women and working together and everything. I love, love, love working on the show because it is, it's a woman director, women producers, Women are the hosts. Right. And I feel like it's this environment where everyone's really listening to each other and respecting each other. And right. it's to be in that space is just, I'm so grateful for that because yes. it's, it's very energizing. And it's just, it's great to be around people that are in it together like that. Cause I do understand what you're talking about. Women do feel that way. Although I will say too, the entertainment industry is often a very male dominated industry, especially in music. And I performed the other night and it was a huge lineup of acts and the majority of them were men and there were women in the audience. And when I got off and I, after I performed and I went out and I had so many women that were like, yeah, just give me a thumbs up. And that felt so good because I felt like I was doing something for them. I was giving them an experience of yeah, women can do this too. Like women can be badasses and get up and represent. And and then, and I love that the women in the audience were so encouraging and just showing that energy and that, that love in return. I'm grateful that these days I'm not around a lot of that women stuff with that yeah, yes. competition thing and stuff. But as I said, I've really gotten to a space where my life is too, life is short. I don't have time to hear around people who are, who are just not here to do good, positive, loving things and support each other. I would much rather be spend time around people who are, you know, who care, who are good, genuine people. So yes, and I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people and, and I, but I have such a small, close group at the same time. See, you you're know? saying something right now that is an important strategy for our listeners, whether they're men or women. Mm -hmm is to find that group of people. I think this is a tip that you're actually giving. Mm -hmm. Find that group of people to work with because we can find all these other groups we know that really we get lost in or we don't feel like we're connected to or they have a different mission in life. So one thing you're saying to our audiences, Hello Self is really about also, finding a group of people that you feel co camaraderie about around. Uh, it is out there. It is out it, there. And it goes back again to what we were just saying. The more we settle for projects that we don't feel great about, yes. how are we going to attract the good projects into our life that are really fulfilling if we're wasting so much time doing yes. something that doesn't serve us? So, so go inside your heart, listeners, yeah. and find out what you want to do. And if you don't know, yeah. get around a group of supportive people and say, I feel lost right now, or I want to do something, but I don't get around a group of supportive people. Because I think what Jenny is, Jenny Ann is saying is that bless your heart some of the things that they're finding with the four women that are on that are do, having this discussion are very supportive of one another even though they come from different cultures they come from different backgrounds they come from i i just think if you want to do something get out of the group of people that you're not moving with and go find a group that yeah yep. so yep. because you can stay stuck forever and be unhappy or you can start moving with a group that's moving in the direction, oh, I'd like to try that. Even yeah. if you don't do it for a month 
or you just go there and you find out that's discovering who you are. Jenny, oh my gosh, this is exactly, yeah. uh, I, I loved what you said about believing in yourself, studying and getting, taking programs or doing whatever gets you closer to this. Even if somebody says, you, are you going to do that? You think you can do, yeah. Oh, and you will have the some of the closest people in the world. You, you'll have family members. You'll have ah. you know, people that, you know, you, th you think this is this person and they're supposed to be a certain way. You can't change people. People are who they're going to be. And you can either take what they say to heart. It might not be a nice thing. You can either take it to heart and let it drown you. Or you can say, you know what? That's who they are, but that's not who I am. So it's not letting those outside discouragements because for a long time, years ago, I had terrible depression and anxiety. I got into this really bad place. And what helped me get out of that space was, is, was saying enough. I don't want to be this person anymore. This isn't who I was so many years ago when I was in New York and doing all these, I got to this place and it was like, I was really the only one that could change that and fix that. And I, if I had hours and hours to share with you, people and, and my story, I have really been through a lot over the years and it has really been all about having faith and knowing things are going to get better, listening to that inner voice, that inner guidance and creating that shift of, okay, I'm depressed. This is terrible, whatever, getting so stuck in all that negative stuff. When I started to look around me and start finding little things that you're grateful for. I'm so grateful I have electricity. If you feel like you have nothing to be grateful for, could you imagine not having electricity? Could you not imagine not having food to eat? Just starting with the basic things like that, that we take for granted so often. And just starting with those, starting with, and then each day, the more you do it, all of a sudden you just start feeling lighter and just, and this internal shift starts to happen because you right. get out of that space. And I'm a firm believer, like the things that I've been through and stuff, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's truly the fact. It really is. And it's just a matter of, you have to make the decision that you are ready to change your life. Because until you do, if, until you make that decision, ah. nothing's going to change. And so many people get stuck in that. Figure out what is it that you want. Get very clear on that. And then make the decision that you're going to make the change. Because until you make the decision that, that your life is going to change, why would anything change? So, and, and you, and that, you stay consistently, you know? Right. And Jenny Ann's saying, you, the only way to know if you like it or you don't like it is to get out there and try it. Exactly. Just go for it. Just get yeah. out and try it. And, and don't let fear stand in your way because fear will creep in, you yes. know? But fear is like our own worst enemy too. But as I said before, what's the worst someone can say? No. Okay. Wasn't meant to be. There's a better project out there for me. Yes. It's that positive mindset, looking at life differently. And it's like when you start to look at things a little differently like that, instead of focusing on, oh, they don't like me or, oh, I'm just awful because they didn't pick me and whatever. No, that's not the case. And there's I, something I, better, I, there's something right. better for you out there. And if you have that faith that Jenny Ann's saying, when you're trying, when you want it to happen a certain way and it doesn't, that's your way that you've planned. And plans are made to get you going, but not always the destination that you planned is what is really best for you. So yeah. she's saying, have faith if the door closes that you go out and you say, okay, I'm going to try this. So yes. it doesn't mean that our way is always going to be the way it happens. I always talk about divine intervention. I yes. always say. <laughs> Don't worry about how you're going to get there. Exactly. Just it's like, it's already here. Believe and it's, it's already happened. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is Jenny Ann. This is so fabulous. It's I'm listening to this and I can't stay out of it because <laughs> I believe so much in what you're saying and yes. I'm still going through it in my life, but I, I love helping others. I started studying a lot of this mindfulness material, Bob Proctor, the law of attraction, gratitude for my own self. And I saw such a shift in my life yes. and, and, and my internal self 
that at one point I started studying it to teach it to others. And I was looking to become a life coach. And because I just love this, I've, I've seen how it works for me. And I just know how it truly can change someone's life. And to be able to share that, I just felt like it was such an amazing thing. And I put a lot of it out there in my Facebook community, Let Love Rule. But actually becoming a coach, which just it wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. It's like what we were saying. It's uh, other things have come my way, but I do love sharing that information. And I, every day I do a morning post in that group and just putting positive energy out there and maybe giving someone food for thought to help them better their life. So let, let me ask you, do you think the way you're living your life, you are a coach? I think I'm a coach. Do I think I'm a coach? If I watch you I, and I it, have- it I've heard yeah. people say to me, wow, you're on a roll or wow. And it's, yeah, but yeah, good, great things are happening, but great things are happening because of what I'm putting out into the world, into the universe, into like, I'm believing in myself. I'm creating this internal shift, which is opening myself up to receive all these wonderful things. I see <laughs> that we go from one career to another and we think they're different. They are not different. They're mm-hmm. all interconnected. By the way you're living your life, you are actually a coach for my listeners by not by this podcast, but by the way that I try this and I try that and I try this, you're actually coaching them. So yeah, you yeah. have, no, you, I guess when I said coach, I was thinking more of a traditional meet with someone for an hour, that kind of thing. That's typical what we yeah. think coaching yeah. is. Yeah. That's because some expert yeah came up and said that's coaching but what i'm learning is and what i'm hearing you say right now is a you're a coach to my listeners simply by sharing your story Mm -hmm. and this is what i don't like about coaching we think it's all these rules Mm -hmm. no the best coaches are the way yeah that's the society oh it's supposed to be a certain way or it's supposed to look a certain way or and it's just not really yeah you have to have meetings with them you have to talk about this you have to uh, yeah so what I see you doing is you said I wanted to be a coach and then it wasn't my but you are still coaching in your tv show in your singing in Mm -hmm. your podcasting in your photography you're helping them see the other side of who they can be in a photograph. Yeah. So it's all coaching. So I think what we need to get over as our society, and if any of you listeners are in this space, is get over the titles of whatever you are. Just get yes. over it. Yes, yes. You're yes. Your life and you're a role model for others. You're celebrating. You're, there's so many, you're coaching. You're doing all yeah. And get out there and just start doing, if you're in a place, cause I got to that place where it's like, who am I now? I'm a mom. Wow. I'm like, who am I? Who am I now? What is it that I want? And for a little while, I didn't know really what I wanted anymore. I was like, how do I, I feel? I got lost in the shuffle of, and until I just started getting back out and really experiencing things again it's like everything starts to open up because when you put when you try new things it's oh I really like that or I really like that or you try old things wow I forgot how much I love doing this like why did I ever stop doing this things like that and it because so often people get caught up in life their careers or whatever or jobs might not be a career it might be a job and they're mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. Doing it to pay the bills and it's pay attention what is your internal flame telling you is it making you feel good when you're doing certain things or is it making you feel bad it's making you feel bad don't do it or find somebody else to do it that was something I learned from Bob Proctor is if if there's something that that doesn't make you feel good hire somebody else to do it for you (laughs) because if you're if if you've got a a living room with ugly curtains in it and every time you walk in there you think oh these curtains are just terrible change them take them down whatever (laughs) that's right or that is Whenever we get into that negative complaining space, we're attracting more negative into our life. So it's really a matter of surrounding yourself with things that feel good and light and make you feel light. And the more you do that, the more you're going to receive into your life. Too. Right and on. Gratitude. Yeah. So. Jenny, this has been, this has been so fantastic. And I'm sure 
we're going to hear lots of great things from the listeners. But mm-hmm. if they wanted to con, if somebody wanted, are you open for somebody to contact you? And do you have a website or an email or something that you'd be willing to give them? I think uh, the best place to reach okay. out to me is just on social media. I've got okay. multiple Jenny Ann and E pages, Jenny with a Y on Facebook. Instagram is Jenny Ann forever. Ann with an E, Ann and E. Those are probably the best places to reach me right now. I know the TV show right now just received a new email address for that. They're developing. The show hasn't even come out yet. We haven't even finished the first season and everything. They're designing a website and everything for that show right now. I have another project I'm starting to do with a huge, enormous project I'm, I'm very excited about, but I can't talk about, which is so hard because you could say, ah, yes. <laughs> like, I don't want to shout out with the one. Exactly. You know? But there's a website being developed for that as well. So I use my social media platforms right now as a way to connect with people and communicate. And, and I like to get to know people too. Yes. So it's like someone can, can email me, but I want to see who you are. I'll never forget years ago when I was in college, this girl told me, you ask a lot of questions. You ask too many questions. <laughs> you know? Right. And I do. I ask a lot of questions. And, but she said it like a bad thing. And I remember thinking, like feeling hurt by that and feeling like, oh, I, I guess I better stop asking so many questions. But the more you ask questions, mm-hmm. the more you learn about people, the more you learn about the world, the more you make new connections. And that's what I love to do. So I love it when people connect with me on social media because I, I love to learn about people and who they are and stuff too. So that's the best place to reach me, yeah. Fantastic. That question thing is so funny because it comes full swing with the talk show because I get to ask a lot of questions on the talk show and it's like, that's right. So So they were dead wrong. Now it's serving you. (laughs) Yeah, you get the last. (laughs) Okay. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun for me. And I I I always love talking with you. I always love talking. (laughs) Our audience is going to love it. And They're going to get on themselves for, hey, let's go. Let's get going. We can do it. Jenny Ann just showed us. So what I'd like to say in wrapping up our podcast today, thank you very much for being here. And to the listeners, remember, I always say Patricia Leonard is your host for Hello Self and keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe, and remember this, keep dreaming.